So this is Rutt Bridges, the chair of the RPD Accountability Committee's Finance Subcommittee. And I call this meeting to order at 11.03. So um, we uh, will start as usual with the uh, minutes of the last meeting, Ron. Um, do any of the members have any comments on that? or suggestions for changes? Are you misquoted anywhere? Hearing none, we will approve those minutes and, uh, and move on with the agenda. So, which I've unfortunately misplaced. <laughs> Hold for just one minute. There we go. So we actually have quite a few things to cover today. So uh, other than that delay, I'd like to move on to free lift and the discussion of, of that. It's something we've talked about several times in the past, uh, but we are now in a position to, to finalize that and a good many other things today. And so Ron, um, do we have anything we need to bring up for that? But I will, I will say that there is one friendly amendment on free list as well. There, if you look at, at what we uh, what we distributed, um, there, there was one. There were two actual changes on the bullet points on the second page at the top. Uh, uh, the preceding bullet point is requiring passes, which are often discounted for low-income residents, encourages transit use. The one under that says four, no significant capital cost, operating cost, da da da. That four should be removed from that. It should just say no significant capital cost and operating cost shared by employers, no significant capital cost, comma and operating cost shared by employers and local government. And then uh, on the next paragraph where it's talking about special uh, free lift services for customers with moderate disabilities, uh, there is about halfway through that a line that says RTD should provide these customers with free lift transit passes for it should say themselves and an accompanying personal attendant. So uh, those were, were two of the changes. Uh, the, the other change on this has to do with the wording of the recommendation. And I'm buried all this time. And give me just a second. Get my house in order. There we go. I'd like to change that recommendation so that it says, the RTD Accountability Committee recommends that RTD pilot first last mile projects, such as the first last mile RTD free lift loop partnerships parentheses, see attached word file, close parentheses, comma, to build ridership, especially among disadvantaged communities. So uh, just to clarify, we, we recommend, we don't say you will do this, and it is a recommendation that uh, these kinds of, um, these kinds of loops of uh, picking up passengers and, and uh, 
in dealing with first last mile issues can have a big impact on ridership. And ridership is after all, the new measure of success for RTD. Kristen. One of the things about the cost for the PCA, the personal care attendant, mm -hmm. right now RTD allows, at least on Accessoride, allows the PCA to ride for free. Right. So is that not an option for uh, if, free lift? The, in the wording, it, it actually is goes a little beyond that. It says to provide a pass for that person. Okay. An identified uh, personal attendant. So it's so better, it's broader. What's well. the difference between the, uh, the wording of assistant and attendant for you're gonna charge an extra $2? for that PCA? Uh, no, that PCA rides for free. Okay. As does the person with the, with the uh, limited disability that is choosing to use transit, for example, instead of using, uh, or in, in addition to using uh, uh, Accessoride, if that's what they need. They, oh. the, the person who has that disability can decide whether to go this route or not. And can I'm, also essentially do both. They I'm can just, say, okay, I'm comfortable uh, being able to get on a bus and, and ride that way, or I'm not comfortable with any of it. I'm confused about this sentence as far as for these special services, they would receive a higher passenger fee of $8 plus $2 for the That's assistant. That's not the person. That is the uh, the driver of the... Oh, of, of the oh, Lyft vehicle or Uber vehicle or whatever. My apologies, I misunderstood. Yeah, it, it's free. I mean, it, it's free to the regular people. Why should it not be free to people with disabilities? In fact, part of the strategy of this is if you can get more people who have the ability to use transit, you can encourage them to use regular transit instead of only using Accessoride. It saves a lot of money for RTD. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's part of the goal of making this benefit available. But the big thing is, you know, people with disabilities like that, uh, let's, let's encourage them to do it by making it free. Now, if you use Accessoride, that's your choice, but that, it, you know, the same rules apply there as they have in the past. No changes are made to that. Is that clarification enough? Too much? <laughs> okay. So I would like to uh, make a motion that those uh, changes that I described be made as a friendly amendment. And if there are no objections among the committee members, uh, I do need a second, but if there are no objections among the committee members, then that would uh, basically not require anything other than a quick vote. So I is can, there a second? I can be your second. Thank you. All in favor? Please signify by raising your hand. All right. And right, one, one suggestion. Um, could these recommendations be numbered uh, just to you know, enable people to hone in on which one? Well, if, if you look at the agenda, the agenda <clears throat> specifies the, um, the pattern of those, how they go up. Uh, might help if we had the agenda up on the screen, Ron. Can we do that? And one second. And can we have further discussion before we vote? Yes, we can. Okay, Re Rebecca, why don't you go ahead and, and speak up then? Further uh, can, can we just... Um, um, I'm trying to read quickly, but the last two recommendations. Oh, we're not voting on all the recommendations. We're oh, only voting on a friendly amendment to got it. Free lift recommendation to add those changes that I that I just discussed. Thank you. I missed that. Okay, we will get to the other ones. I hope, <laughs> but we do need to to move. Are there are there any objections to that friendly amendment? I think that's all we need to, to do that, okay? So um, let's move on. And Rebecca, you're up next. Sorry, 
Um, Ron? I uh, wanted to make sure I was unmuted. Um, so Mr. Chair, do you, want to, do you want to take an action on the recommendation related to free lift specifically before you move on to the, um, to the um, dashboard recommendation? Thank you, that is, uh, that is exactly what we wanted to do. Um, and, and in that, uh, the free lift recommendation is uh, the RTD Accountability Committee recommends that RTD pilot first last mile projects, such as uh, first last mile RTD free lift loop partnerships, see attached word file, to build ridership, especially among disadvantaged communities. That is the motion. And uh, do I have a second on that motion? that we forward that to the RTD Accountability Committee. I'll second that again. Okay. Discussion. Anyone want to uh, preempt any other points about free lift and what we are asking RTD to do? If, if not, I'll call the question. All in favor of that uh, proposed recommendation. Please raise your hand. Good. It looks looks unanimous to me. Very good. Okay. Let's uh, let's move on now to uh, the RTD dashboard recommendations. And I apologize, but uh, we got uh, there's a lot going on in the legislature, and I know Rebecca is pretty well knows what her top priority is there. But she did get the time to go in. I tried to, I tried to make some, incorporate a lot of what she had done in here, but she did a better job of it. And uh, we have a revised version here that uh, I would ask Ron uh, to put up the RTD dashboard recommendations, financial information as revised uh, by Rebecca. Very good. And so, Rebecca, Rebecca, would you discuss this recommendation using this as your model? Uh, happy to, Chair. And do I need to make a, a friendly amendment suggestion to replace this in the packet? I think we do. And so, uh, what what uh, we are, and this is something actually I was going to do. What we want to do is we want to replace the one that's in the packet with the one that's before you on the screen here. And that is the, uh, what, what we consider to be the new and improved version from Rebecca. So uh, are there any objections to that friendly amendment? Hearing none, it is replaced. Thank okay. you. Rebecca, I, go ahead. I appreciate the committee's flexibility there. Um, I just frankly missed the packet deadline to be able to get the um, this more sort of advanced copy um, into the packet. So appreciate that. Um, I, uh, you know, if, if chair or if others want to um, vote on this at the end of the meeting to have a little bit more time to, to look at this, um, we can certainly do that. But I do wanna say this is um, completely consistent with um, our discussions at our last meeting with the four main recommendations. But what I did do was add in a specific reference through our discussion around focus groups and the, the value of seeking some um, sort of general public input on how to best craft this information, especially this very detailed financial information for public digestibility. Um, I added also in here specific mention that because the RTD financial terminology can be very hard to understand, that that lack of clarity can lead to mistrust. I think that was a, um, a comment that Elise Jones made in particular. Um, otherwise, the, the substance of these recommendations are the same as we discussed last month with the four main categories of, of one, having this very simple kind of one sheet budget information that is easily understandable. So if you just wanted to get a sense of the RTD budget, you could do that. The second recommendation being if you actually want to to dive in and understand that that would be possible to do because there would be sort of a lay person's overview of the budget and these key terms. 
The third recommendation sort of focuses on fast tracks, um, given the additional public scrutiny there and, and complementing uh, RTD's um, pretty good website just on the fast track system with information on what the FISA account is and a, and a good overview of, of how fast tracks is, is funded and even what it means. Um, I think we talked about at our last meeting that um, that term may not be uh, as understandable as, as we all think it is just living in this world. Um, but really most folks just think of it as a light rail. And then the <coughs> fourth recommendation um, is specific to a lot of transparency and clarity around RTD's priorities for the stimulus dollars, both the ones they've received and the ones they have yet to receive. Um, I think that covers it. Oh, um, the other piece I added based on our conversation last time was that RTD should look at other formats like videos. Again, I do think the focus groups would help in sort of flush, uh, flushing out some of those ideas. Um, with that, I will pause and, and be happy to take any questions. I, I do want to make one comment. This, a lot of this work has been done in conjunction with the governance committee and with the operations committee. And both of those committees will have their own uh, uh, recommendations for us. And, um, and those will be merged in with this. So the final document uh, from that will that will essentially get reviewed uh, in the accountability committee will be the merger of this document and the materials from other committees that have been uh, fortunately cooperating and working with us on this. So I would just also like to give uh, Natalie Shishido um, her due credit on, on her help here. But I, I see Elise has a, her hand up. We've, we've heard you say that before, and we all wish we had a Natalie Shishido, <laughs> Shishido for our, of our very own. She sounds like she's been a real asset. And thank you, Natalie. Happy to help. <laughs> I, I was just gonna jump in and say that I uh, really support this recommendation, the set of recommendations, and appreciate the, the sort of narrative text that really does a good job of explaining our conversation and our conclusions about what would create greater public clarity on this financial information. So um, I'm happy if this is a, if it's time for a motion, I'm happy to second it or provide a motion. Um, I think it's, it's really well done. Well, let's first ask if there's any further discussion from the committee. If, if not, then we can entertain a motion. Any further discussion? Good. Elise, uh, would you like to, uh, let me see if well, I- have... Actually, maybe Rebecca wants to make the motion since she did all the work. <laughs> I, I have the, uh, let me see if I can find if there were any edits to that language. I don't think there are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the language for the motion, uh, is uh, this is embedded in here? Or are your reference? Right, I did. I did pop up sort of at least a a version of um, the language related to the financial information. Okay. Well, then I will uh, let either Lisa or Natalie read it off. Okay. Yes, it, it's uh, about halfway down the page. Starts the RTD accountability, recommends that RTD incorporate the recommended financial information in the RTD dashboard. See attached recommended financial information word file. So that is, that is the, uh, that is what we would like someone uh, in particular, someone who worked really hard on this, like Rebecca, to move. <laughs> uh, I will uh, move the recommendation for forward. <laughs> and I'll second. <laughs> and is there any further discussion? If so, uh, all in favor, please raise your right hand. 
Very good. Unanimous. What if it was our left, right? Is that not? Well, <laughs> don't give me it. Just kidding. Yeah. Or what if we didn't have a right hand? Okay. Um, let's uh, move on in the agenda. Would you put the agenda back up uh, if you would, Ron? Free lift and this and that. Okay, um, unfinished fast tracks, Northwest rail recommendations. And um, let's start with this. That was fast track slashing by. Okay. So, um, Let's, I can't remember which one we do first. Do we do the compromise one first or do we discuss the, uh, the other one first? There really are two parts to this. And I distributed this and, and reached out for comments from uh, some of the folks here, but, uh, and, and got some good ones. But one of the things uh, th that, I'm trying to do in this is basically say, uh, and the one, the one that I think we'll go over first, uh, Ron, will be the, uh, the recommendations that RTD evaluate the validity of the suggested benefits of a BRT solution and respond to the, to the committee. And the purpose of this is basically to look at, no, it's the other one. <laughs> All right, let's do this one first. There we go. So, um, so this is the recommendation. Go to that first slide. And the recommendation, and this seems to, there we go. That's, that's the right size for the screen. Let me, let me first emphasize that this is, this is a recommendation, as are all the things that we do uh, in the RTD Accountability Committee. But, uh, but the concept here is that this has been a, a really tough issue. It's been a tough issue for RTD to deal with. It has created a lot of tension uh, with the governor's office uh, and uh, with, with other parties involved in this. And, um, and the challenge is that if you look at the cost of building Northwest Rail, if it started tomorrow, it would put RTD <laughs> in a terrible fighting situation. I don't think it could start. So um, the recommendation is that since RTD needs to pay down its debt before building Northwest Rail, in the interim, uh, RTD should negotiate with the communities of the Northwest Corridor to rapidly expand BRT while continuing to evaluate Northwest Rail options. Uh, and you know, if, if you look at what we've been assigned as the accountability committee, it was to determine how RTD can achieve long-term long financial stability and growth while still meeting its core mission. And, uh, and the governor has been pretty clear that he doesn't want, want to see the Northwest Corridor have to wait 20 years, which is something like what you would need to do in order to get your de debt situation, which is two thirds of the of the uh, revenues that RTD gets from sales and use taxes down to a reasonable level. Uh, so what, what we're trying to do with this is, is say that uh, BRT might be able to deliver services a lot sooner than we can expect Northwest Rail to, to start moving its first passengers. And so also that that could be done without threatening RTD's long-term financial stability, which is one of our key goals in the committee is to always be cognizant of that. So next slide. So this is the conundrum. You know, if, if you look at this from the perspective of the Northwest Corridor, they've seen RTD deliver 113 miles of rail 
into the Metro Denver area, light rail and commuter rail. And, and they was paid for basically by financing that used the future revenues of sales and use taxes as like collateral effectively. And, and they're now in a situation where two thirds of that revenue from those things goes just for debt and, and principal payments on all of the financing that it took to build those 113 miles. Well, the, the, uh, the situation, when you look at that, the, the rest of the money, most everything else, in fact, more than most everything else, since, since rail fast tracks has been operating in a deficit and is, is gonna have a 42 million deficit just in this 2021 budget, uh, there, there really isn't anything to build Northwest Rail with. And so uh, if you look at all the fast track projections that were made originally, uh, there's really no solution in sight. And so next slide, please. This, this one's called Cutting the Gordian Knot. <laughs> Those of you who are familiar with Greek mythology. Uh, if you look at where it could come from, the bus money, RTD bus services are projected to have deficits going out into the future a long time. They're using their uh, tax, sales and use tax money to run the bus system. And it's not like a lot of money could come from there to build Northwest Rail. Uh, it's about a billion and a half, uh, 2018 dollars, uh, an estimate that goes back a little ways uh, to build. And in addition to that, there's a $20.6 million maintenance, operations and maintenance uh, cost on top of it. If you just looked at 30 year depreciation on that, it's $50 million a year uh, for the cost of that 1.5 billion. Um, that if you add the 20 million for maintenance and support, it's about $70 million a year uh, to provide that 4,100 rides a day, which is the initial estimate, 1.28 million rides a year. The Flatiron Flyer, though, has been wonderfully successful. And it's, it's been a really, it has been a primary source of, of transit for a lot of folks for whom it can serve. The problem, one of the problems that I wanna make sure everybody's clear on is just the Flatiron Flyer route doesn't solve the problems of the Northwest Corridor. And it's, it's not just reinforcing that, it's gonna suddenly make uh, the need for Northwest Rail or, or some other services go away. But if you look at the Flatiron Flyer, the cost of delivering rides on the Flatiron Flyer is, is uh, really small compared to the cost of, of Northwest Rail. And in these comparisons, uh, before the, the tickets, the, the rail passes and everything else that offset the cost, it's been $6.93 a ride, which that, that is a real tribute to, North, to the Flatiron Flyer success. And part of that success is the fact that, that BRT uses public roads to ride on and rail has to build its own infrastructure out. And so that's one of the reasons that uh, BRT can be such a cost-effective uh, tool. And so the idea is how can you, can you find a way to really expand that uh, BRT services until Northwest Rail is really financially feasible. So next slide, please. So here's a proposal for a possible compromise. And I don't mean to say this is the answer at all. I mean to say this is the sort of things we ought to be thinking about in order to get to a point where we can find a compromise that really uh, works for both RTD and works for the folks in the Northwest Corridor. So here's, here is the strategy. This is, this is a straw man, okay? The, the details of any compromise would require a lot of meetings between RTD and, and legislative representatives, the governor's office, and particularly the folks in the Northwest Corridor. But here's, here's one. Suppose RTD said, we'll commit to restore all six flat iron flyer routes within 12 months. That would go a long way to, 
that would get us back to the point where you could handle the 3.36 million riders again, uh, and, and potentially more than that. So second point, within five years, RTD will increase BRT capacity within the Northwest Corridor uh, from 3.37 million to 5 million rides per year. So it's the 2019 rides plus all of Northwest Rail's projected 2035 uh, requirements for rides. And RTD then, this is a big one, would provide the additional funds to complete Longmont BRT, uh, which is about 1.75 million. And that is, uh, uh, if, you, if you look at the cost of that, financing it at 2% interest over 30 years would cost about $9.3 million a year. That is a lot more manageable than the total cost of, of all of uh, Northwest Rail. But again, it's, this is an interim solution. So RTD will sell all monthly passes. This is the other piece. And, and that includes discounted passes at half price to residents of the Northwest Corridor until Northwest Rail construction begins. So what does this cost RTD? Well, if they're already running a certain schedule of all those buses, they may lose some income from passes, but for the most part, uh, it, is, it is something that is more manageable and it also lets them really build a ridership. And ridership is, is, uh, is the key here. It's a cheap way, 9.3 million a year to really jump your ridership up. Uh, and th this last one uh, is, is, uh, is something that, that Elise and I have talked about. Uh, and I would like to m ask for a friendly amendment if we can first, take a look at that alternative slide here. Rod, can you bring that alternative slide up? This may take a moment. Okay, good. So here's here is a the in the blue text here is how this has changed after some discussion. So the idea is that all parties would agree that BRT expansion and the completion of RTD's other three unfunded, unfinished corridors would have priority over Northwest Rail. So essentially call a truce on Northwest Rail building it until uh, in this case, either the front range passenger rail is funded. And I have the opinion that that's going to take a while uh, or other substantial Northwest Rail funding sources are available. So we're not giving up on Northwest Rail. We're just saying until we have a real financially workable solution, uh, we're gonna focus on these other areas. And then finally, uh, however, funding for Northwest Rail studies will continue. One of the things we really need on Northwest Rail is we need to understand, everybody needs to come to common agreement on what it's gonna cost, how it's gonna build, be built, where the stations were, all these, all these other issues. And, uh, it, it doesn't seem right now that there is a common agreement on all of those things. And so you're not gonna get there until you do studies and really understand what some of those things are. You know, it, a lot of the planning on Northwest Rail was done a few years ago and it certainly at, at the minimum needs a refresh. Okay, so I would, I would like to propose a friendly amendment that this slide replace that previous slide in our, uh, in our PowerPoint that contains the details of a proposed solution, not if, the proposed solution. Ron, Ron? This is Ron, may I ask a question or put something out there for you to consider? I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the, the half price um, monthly passes and discount passes. Um, for one particular area of RTD's district, I think, I, I think that would be um, extremely challenging, if not impossible, for RTD to do, given federal requirements around Title VI and equity assessments. And and there are other sort of fair structure recommendations being considered 
and likely included by the accountability committee relating to fare structure and reducing fares and and sort of looking at it a little bit more holistically. So I, I just I, I'm not going to say don't do it. You y'all can do what you want to do. I'm just I, I would just suggest that I'm I'm not sure this is a very feasible component and might and might detract from sort of the other elements you want to consider. I, I appreciate that, Ron. I, I would say that sometimes when you have really good legislators at a federal level, they can get exceptions to some rules. And perhaps something like that might be possible. There might be a, an exception. Oh, given. That's I not going to happen, Rod. You know what, Matthew? I don't know what will happen. I will also point out that this is a proposed concept to get the negotiation started. And if it doesn't happen, then there may be other ways to do it. So I'm not, I'm not eager to take it out of here just because it, uh, it, it is considered to not be possible. Right, I apologize. I was talking to myself <laughs> and I didn't realize I wasn't muted. <laughs> Matthew, I appreciate it's ultimately up to the committee's discretion. I appreciate the honesty of your comment. And and I've you know I've thought the same thing myself. It may not be possible, but uh, if it could be possible, it would be a great negotiating advantage in this discussion. And it would, would also be something that wouldn't cost a lot of money to RTD to do. So for now, I'll say that. I'd rather leave it in here, but um, we, um, I'm open to further discussion by the committee if they'd like to. But I offer as a friendly amendment that we adopt this, the wording of this slide uh, for the, uh, what we pass on to the broader committee. Rebecca? Yeah, could you walk me through number five again? I'm not sure I understand it. Okay. It, so yeah. the, the idea is that uh, the, the parties in the negotiation would agree to that the expansion, the, to agree to focus on two things, the expansion of BRTs within uh, this corridor or elsewhere, and, and other three other unfinished corridors would have rail a priority corridors, for right? Northwest Rail other than continuing studies to really understand the issues related to Northwest Rail. And, and that's why the, until front range passenger rail is funded, if suddenly front range passenger rail, they come up with all the funding for that, I think we have a legitimate reason to go back to, to focusing on Northwest rail uh, or some other substantial funding sources become available. But the, the three unfinished corridors is referring to the other rail corridors, right? Um, uh, Ron, there are they all three rail? I think they're all three. Yes, rail. they are. Yeah. They're, so if I if I can yes, interpret what I what I understand this to say, Rudd, is basically, you know, RTD's been sort of stuck in this mode of if you can't if you can't move on Northwest Rail, you can't really do anything else. Right. And this is saying, you know what, in the in the meantime, until you sort of figure out Northwest Rail, let's let's give RTD some of some ability to at least look at doing some other things as well on the system. Is that but, accurate? But wouldn't doing those other things make Northwest Rail even harder to achieve because what little funding there would be available is now diverted to getting the three other unfinished corridors going? I, I think aside PISA, but part of that money is going to go to, to, the, uh, to the BRT stuff. So if I'm from one of those three corridors, I would say, why is it all about Northwest Rail? Or why is it all about the Northwest Corridor? We have three unfinished and, and unfunded areas. Can't we build out some of that? Can we give some focus to that? So yes, in a way, you know, what you're saying is right. It isn't, it isn't just about RTD. Uh, it isn't just about Northwest Rail. And, and there are board members who feel pretty strongly that their corridors are not getting any attention and would be less likely to support, for example, Northwest funding Northwest Rail when it did come up. So- I am, I'm not sure I'm 
I'm supportive of this, but I'd like to hear what the other committee members think. Okay. Elise. Well, I was encouraging Rutt not to uh, include number five, and this is his compromise language um, over that. Um, my concerns about number five are, um, I understand the, the notion um, that Rutt's trying to communicate, but we really haven't looked at the other three unfinished corridors in any level of detail around costs or likelihood or timing. So I, I don't feel like we're informed in saying anything. I think the wording of have priority over Northwest Rail is, again, while I understand the intent, is not going to fall well. Um, so I guess I think it would be simpler to remove that statement. Um, what I do like about the, the overall sort of compromise slide is the recognition that A, we need to solve the problem of what's gonna happen in the Northwest Corridor and recognize that there's a cost associated with delaying for multiple decades, anything associated with Northwest Rail. And that in a sense, RTD is sort of making it up, paying interest, whatever on that unfinished promise by moving forward with BRT mobility in the short term. And I think that that makes sense and is fair that we do that while we're, we're evaluating and figuring out the feasibility of Northwest Rail. So I, I think all of that, and, and I hear what um, Ron was saying about, you know, there may be equity issues with doing discounted monthly passes um, for just the Northwest Corridor. And that, that may be true. I actually support discounted passes for everybody in the RTD district. And I think that's reflected in our fair proposal. But again, the notion of we need to make people whole and provide them some mobility in the short term, even while we're working that, you know, the big payoff is, is, is still um, a ways down the track, so to speak. Um, and I appreciate the, the intent behind um, the notion of, of discounted passes for the Northwest Corridor. So those are my um, thoughts on this slide. Thank you, Elise. And I certainly invite comments from others. Okay, so, you know, I, I, I hope I have made it clear that this is not, here's what you have to do, but there has to be, there has to be parties coming to the table that are willing to make some kinds of compromises and in some cases do some difficult things in order to, to get everybody to the point that they're not arguing about Northwest Rail, but they're trying to find solutions to deliver transit uh, to folks and, and do it in a, in a reasonable time frame. Um, having said that, you know, I, I uh, am willing to get rid of five entirely uh, and, uh, and in, in the process, get rid of six as well. I do want to leave the stuff on the passes in there just so that they'll try to find some way to do something. You, you can't come to the table and say, okay, here's, here's what we're going to do. And if, if, you're, if you're not willing to consider ideas and try to find compromises. I mean, I've, I've been in a lot of business negotiations on a whole lot of different issues that, that were very difficult. And, and in the end, unless both sides are really willing to find some compromises, nothing's gonna happen. And it's just gonna to continue to be a, a battle. So that's why those things are in there. But if this committee feels that they shouldn't be, then I am willing to remove them. And we've got, it sounds like two members who would rather see five and six go away. And uh, I'd, I'd like to have better uh, feeling of consensus on this when we pass it on. Uh, so I it would accept uh, a recommended uh, amendment to this to drop five and six. So would so someone like to move? I, I would move that, but I guess I want, want to um, also suggest that the uh, the notion of there, there's some trade-offs and that we're gonna evaluate Northwest Rail through studies and some other things are captured in the 
full um, uh, finance subcommittee amendments that we we amended early on with regards to free lift, but some of those things I think are captured in the other subcommittee recommendation lists. So I don't feel like we're totally losing um, some of the trade-offs, although we don't we don't speak to the other unfinished corridors. But I would move that we um, accept this slide without five and six. Okay, do I have a second? Could I ask a question on, um, are you still open for discussion? Well, let's get the amendment on the table uh, and, I second. and then we'll discuss it. Great. So Rebecca, would you like to comment further? Uh, is my second on the record now? It is. It okay. is. <laughs> the amendment's on the table and uh, we will now open it to discussion. Okay. Um, on four, I. I guess my my one question is whether that level of specificity at, specificity at half price is is necessary. Um, that that seems to really uh, to be a directly worded recommendation, and I'm I'm wondering of the value over that over just making the statement that um, there should be a, a lesser price offered. But I don't know, Red. Are you knowing you, you've got specific thinking of how you arrived at half price. I, I do, if I can comment on that. Uh, you know, if I'm a senior and um, and I'm getting a 50% discount and I'm paying $200 a month for a, a pass, it it is very attractive to me to be able to get that pass for $50. Uh, not personally, but, um, but I think it would be for a lot of seniors who are voters uh, and are a group that, uh, that you want to have in support of something like a, a compromise like this. There are a lot of other groups too that, that uh, you know, especially the people who are, are getting discount passes because of economic conditions and things like that, that, uh, that it, it seems that worthy of trying to find uh, lower prices. I know there are people in Boulder who, who are strong supporters of of uh, the concept of free transit. And it's not an unknown concept. It's been done in other places around the country. I don't wanna go that far, but uh, I do think that uh, at, at half price, it's enough, it's clear enough. You know, if it said 43% or something or 28 or even a quarter, I think, I think half price is, is pretty clearly a, a motivator for people to support this. That's why I used half. And and Ron, would you mind restating your your comment earlier on on four, just so I understand? Yeah, I, sorry, I'm sorry. I had to with my screen sharing and you all up. I have to kind of refine my mute button. Um, so I think the the only issue I was I was really raising for consideration is sort of the equity issue around the entire RTD district. And, and carving out one particular part of the region and saying, hey, you get discounted fares just by um, the notion that you, you happen to live in one part of the region versus other parts of the region that also haven't gotten um, their entire fast tracks commitment met yet, um, who also have had sort of service um, reduced um, as a result of the pandemic. And, I, and then that FTA requirement about sort of a full equity analysis to do, oh, yeah. and, and and in the context of the broader fair recommendations that are that are also coming from the accountability committee, um, that that's all I was offering for for consideration. And if I make make an observation, a comment on that, um, if I live in the Northwest Corridor, my my <clears throat> observation is that you have committed all of our taxes to paying the debt on building 113 miles of light and computer commuter rail that's Metro Denver. It doesn't do a thing for us up here in the Northwest Corridor unless we first get down to where it is. And so we deserve a bigger discount. We deserve some sort of uh, benefit on the other side. I'm not saying that it is uh, legally or uh, in terms of the federal controls that RTE has to operate under, a trivial matter it, or even possible. 
but I think that that there ought to be some chips on the table when you're trying to do a negotiation. And this yeah, is and 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 Rod, and I, I don't mean to argue. I'm really not trying to be argumentative. I'm just trying to. Well, Ron, I, you have deep knowledge in these areas, and I appreciate that. I just want to make sure there's a full consideration, and I understand that that perspective exists out yeah. in in that part of the region. Um, I, I would also suggest that you know there is value to the entire RTD to everyone that lives in the RTD district of the fast track system and being connected to that system and having access to that system. It's not it's not just about and. and part of the Northwest Corridor, at least, uh, you know, this Northwest Corridor is an extension of a line that's recently being completed. So, I mean, there is value to being part of the system and having access to that broader regional system that I think we shouldn't, we shouldn't just assume that that perspective while expressed and held by some people is, is exactly true either um, about them not getting any value just because the Northwest Rail specifically hasn't been completed because there are other unfinished corridors. Flatiron Flyer was um, was completed, uh, which was also included in Fast Track. So just um, suggesting some caution. The other, the other, sorry, Elise, one more, one more point I did want to raise. There are limitations um, of only six months to do these kinds of specialized fare um, reductions, which we, which I think RTD encountered with the, the North Line. Uh, there, you know, the the last two stops in the North Line are sort of in the regional fare structure as opposed as opposed to local. And RTD did for six months sort of pilot the the local fare structure for that, and then had to take that away because they can only do that specialized fare for for six months. So, just again, I'm I'm done. I've gotten my stuff out on the table. I appreciate the opportunity. Good, good. Well, I'm just wondering, and again, I, Brad, I want to respect the work that you put into this and, and don't want to butcher it. On the other hand, uh, I am hearing that there are likely to be some legal issues raised in this. I'm just wondering if throwing it out there, don't know if I have any particular language, but something in effect of um, suggesting that you know, RTD will pursue legally allow, allowable opportunities to provide for more affordable mobility um, in the Northwest corridor and, and other un, unfinished corridors. Something like that. That's a lit, that that dials it back. Recognizes that there there there's some legal issues that would have to we'd have to make sure um, we don't run afoul of. But I I think if we make it more general then it could come through fairs, it could come through other opportunities, it could come through local partnerships, but just recognize that unfinished corridors are um, getting delayed mobility and that, that, that there should be some compensatory um, benefit provided while they're waiting for the full mobility promise from their fast tracks vote and contribution. So, Again, I don't know that I have the right wording, but that maybe something a little bit more general would get at your point, Rut, which I agree with, but also recognize that um, you know we'd have to think through it carefully, and it might just not it might be Northwest Corridor and the other unfinished corridors. Um, so I'm just throwing that out there for for thought. Mm -hmm. Rebecca. I think Dan got his two fingers up before I got mine. Oh, no, you were first, Rebecca. Go ahead. Okay, I, I was just going to, to say, I, I agree with Elise. Um, I kind of like that. I, I also just want to remind us all that I think all our recommendations still need to go through this kind of equity lens we've agreed to apply, right? And this seems like one from an equity standpoint that we'd want to be thoughtful about and have that group think of just, just because there is a, providing, suggesting that the committee wants to have discounted fares for one part of the region with kind of out regard, without regard to disproportionately impacted communities and all the other things we need to consider that, that I would want some more uh, input from the, that, that group on that recommendation. If on that comment, as I, is. I would uh, make a, the observation that everybody in the Northwest Corridor is not wealthy. There's a good many wealthy people in Boulder but it's, it's a bigger corridor than that. I, I don't disagree. Uh, Dan? 
along the lines of what Elise was proposing, I was going to suggest maybe that you preface number four with something like, if permissible by federal regulations, to that, to that, to that. It's not a bad suggestion, but I, I think the bigger issue that's on the table right now is we have another committee that's working on discounts on fares. We have a we have a uh, a CEO of RTD who has really expressed uh, a willingness to take a good look at fares and um, and recognize that the fares of RTD are some of the highest in the country. And so um, I, I am being convinced by uh, the arguments that you're providing here that maybe it's best if we just drop this one all together. You know, if, if we decided to, if, if the people who are negotiating this decided to try to do something like this, they're free to do that. All we do is an RTD accountability committee is make recommendations. And so if that recommendation, part of this recommendation goes away, but it becomes possible for other reasons to, to do something like this, then it can always be brought back in. There are people here on this call uh, and this, in this chat today who are hearing all these arguments. And so, I'll just consider that to be a, a positive thing in this, <laughs> but I'm willing to I'm willing to drop um, four, five, and six uh, because I feel like that's more or less the the mood. And not only that, I've also heard some good arguments from people on the committee and and others why we uh, it might be a, it might be a bridge too far. So um, there are two ways of doing this. One is just to table the previous amendment and make another amend, uh, recommended amendment to drop four, five, and six. So uh, can we get a consensus on tabling the previous amendment? Either that or I'd accept a friendly amendment to add four to my motion to uh, get rid of five and six, if that's faster. All right. That that would be my easy. second or agree with that. I second that. How about that? I, I think I'm the seconder. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Okay. The seconder is the one that has to agree. If yeah. you agree on the amendment and the uh, original motion maker and the seconder of the original motion, accept the friendly amendment. So I think we have a viable motion to strike four, five, and six on the table. All right. Is there any other discussion we'd like to have on this? Good. I call the question. All in favor of striking four, five, and six from the proposal? All opposed? Shall we move on? Good. So uh, at this point, uh, Ron, if we can, let's go back to the original slideshow. Uh, to the slide following this slide. We've beaten this one to death. So let's move on. And also, uh, these are the other parts of it. Really, there has to be a cooperation between CDOT and RTD to push as, as much as they can to get uh, the Longmont BRT, which is what I'm calling it, uh, completed by 2026. And I'm not a traffic engineer or a highway construction engineer, but uh, it, would, it would seem that that is pretty close to a reasonable date to, to try to do that. There is one other possibility I'd just bring up verbally here, and that is that you can have a BRT without it necessarily going on the road that is your final destination. So for example, uh, down 287 and over, over on North Boulder Road, uh, there's already, I think it's called, is it, it's not the Bolt service. What's the 
North Boulder Road uh, bus line that exists right now. But the point is to try to find other ways to get transportation for the folks of Longmont without having to wait if this thing is delayed by anything else. So uh, RTD will provide BRT service access for Louisville, Lafayette, Broomfield, Westminster by 2026. Uh, again, you know, the dates are tentative in here. Uh, within with the first, but but arguably there's already BRT access uh, for those communities. There, there are uh, some bus lines, uh, for example, that connect Lafayette and Louisville, uh, and and uh, and Broomfield has a station there. But there's a lot of Broomfield that's a pretty good distance away. Uh, so that's a a kind of a. It doesn't mean you're going to build a bunch of other BRT out, but at the same time, item three. RTD will endorse and encourage completion of US 287 BRT and SH7 uh, BRT, but it's not a financial commitment to do that. It is just how can we help encourage that uh, to happen? So that's what uh, this slide is about. And, and uh, 287 and 7 were also uh, part of the NAMS uh, discussion. From before, and I think they're they're probably in, in Dr. Cog's uh, long-term vision for Colorado. Next slide. The Flatiron Flyer service frequency already far exceeds Northwest Rail's thirty-minute peak, one hour, one uh, thirty-minute peak, one hour off peak promise and supports more express services. So we are looking at a service here. And if you look at why people don't use transit, I mean, I interviewed a guy in Germany when I was writing my second book. And he said, our transit system takes me from where I'm not to not quite where I want to go. And, and it, it's very true. I mean, it's that first last mile that's a killer for a lot of people. And so that has to be part of, of the solution. But the other thing that people love is they love high frequency transit. If you look at London, that's a great example of it. I mean, the underground is terrific. I don't look at when the trains are gonna be there. I just go down there and grab the next one. And it's so, it's so frequent already in the previous, in the way the Flatiron Flyer was operating before it got uh, four of its five lines cut, uh, it really was uh, pretty impressive in terms of frequency. Next slide. Oh, the other thing I wanna mention about that one is the original promise in, in uh, <clears throat> Fast Tracks was, was uh, I think 30, 30 minute service for one uh, hour or, or 30 minutes on and off and then, and then 30 minutes for the Longmont part. Uh, this is better than that by a wide margin. So other advantages of this compromise, BRT allows for more growth. Uh, it, it's easier to expand a bus service than it is to expand a, a rail service. One of the problems here is Union Station has what's called a narrow throat. And this is where they swap one rail uh, uh, train out and replace it with another. And so if you wanted to get faster, uh, more trains through, you're competing with that station throat issue. Unlike rail, BRT service levels can de be demand driven and incrementally increased. It's not, you know, if, if you wanna get a little faster service, then you may change schedules. Uh, Northwest Rail is plan, as planned would require an additional 46 diesel trains, adding noise, crossing delays and environmental and air quality impact. The cost of electric, Electric buses uh, will decline due to falling battery cost has declined and uh, improving air quality and lowering maintenance costs. Maintenance on electric vehicles is really low as a user of an electric vehicle. I haven't uh, spent much time at a dealership like I did with my other cars. So $50 monthly passes for seniors, low income students is a bargain that will help grow transit ridership and RTD's new success criteria. I would uh, ask for a friendly amendment to strike that last bullet. 
So it's, it's no longer relevant. So do we have any, uh, any opposition to a friendly amendment to strike that last bullet? Hey, Rod, I, I apologize. I have a question. Yep. So I, I, I understand sort of the specific recommendation items to include in, uh, to, to forward to the accountability committee. Um, I'm, I would suggest that uh, these are arguments and sort of substantiation for those recommendations, not standalone recommendations themselves. And I would, I would ask you and, this, and the subcommittee for some editorial license so that as we compile the final report, we, we take this information to incorporate into the final report as appropriate to support and substantiate the recommendations that are being forwarded. Is that acceptable to you? You mean instead of including this PowerPoint? Yes. Because we're trying to put together a final report from the accountability committee that has a common design theme that is structured in a way that sort of makes sense and, and supports the recommendations and the assignment. And I, I think it's it, it will be a challenge for us logistically to just take kind of verbatim uh, a slide deck and, and try to force that into the format of the of the ultimate final report, which you'll get a chance to review. So I'm just I'm, I'm asking for some editorial license to take information from this uh, and, and include it into the final report. I'm not saying not include it in the final report. I'm just suggesting sort of how that we give we have some latitude in terms of how we incorporate that in uh, in the context of a comprehensive, co cohesive document for the committee. I, I was going to um, ask a, something similar. I wasn't clear in even on the last two slides, are those specific recommendations that we need to wordsmith or have we, when did we, this seems to be kind of more of that narrative background. No, it's narrative background. Okay. They're not intended to be specific recommendations. But are the other two slides specific recommendations? Would you move up to the other two slides for a second? Yeah, right? I, yeah I was interpreting these as the same kind of background information. Yeah. It's, but there, there is a recommendation. There isn't a, it isn't a recommendation. It is, here is one of the things, here, here's a suggestion for the negotiations as a starting point. And one of those things was flat iron flyer, restore that as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. So in, in that sense, in this one, you will note the word proposed, right? not you will. <laughs> so I see nothing wrong with, with having that in this slide. Right, this is, this is, this is one y'all have voted on. I'm taking that as your staff as a specific recommendation. We'll full, we will take this as, as it's been amended, as you voted on it, and we will, We'll we'll put that in the 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 formal recommendations. Um, what I'm what I'm suggesting to you and, and asking for is for this other sort of background information not have to incorporate this sort of as the slide deck specifically, but take the background information that substantiates your recommendations, supports your recommendations, and incorporate that into the final report that Understood. surrounds the recommendation. Understood. Um, you know, all I would say is that I would really like to see that, how you've done that. You, 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 def you will. The full accountability committee will see that draft report, review that draft report, and adopt that draft report. So you'll, have, you'll have opportunity to review that and provide any, any um, edits or changes that you'd like. But I, I want a little more than that, Ron. I want the ability to see your draft of that, how this got moved into there. I won't say that I will dictate how you do it, but I would like to be able to make suggestions to ensure that the content is reasonably well captured. Yeah. I, okay. Sure. Is that is that a problem? I think we're saying the same. I think we're saying the same thing, right? In the end, it's the accountability that's going to either vote up or down, but they're not going to be wordsmithing. You know, they're not going to be in the weeds and the details. They're going to, I think, have the opportunity to read it and say yes, or, this is good or it isn't. Okay. You you pers you personally 
um, outside of the accountability committee review of the draft report want to see the draft report? Yes. Separately and sort of before the accountability committee sees the draft report. And I want to be able to make comments to, to you and Dr. Cog on that, but those comments are comments only and yeah. you do not have to take my suggestions. I, th I, I, I guess uh, if I could just interject, I, I think what I'm hearing is that uh, these are finance subcommittee recommendations and perhaps uh, the, the subcommittee could have an opportunity to review your write-up of the recommendations before they get incorporated into something that's going to go out to the full accountability. Yeah, we'll be able to accommodate that, right? Not okay. a problem. And can I just clarify some of the detailed background information that has been compiled over the course of our journey on this and other issues are probably going to be appendices, are they not? Um, some will some will be incorporated as appendices. Some will okay. be folded into the body of the document. And again, we're we're still working out with North Highland the outline of the final report. Right. I'm just we don't have we don't have. <laughs> Obviously, a lot of this stuff is still in flux, and we're working through sort of how the final report will be structured. But it'll look, it'll have a look and feel like the interim report from the accountability committee. Um, and and I'm just saying we want we want it to be cohesive, a common common design theme. We want it readable and sort of structured in a way that that makes some sense. So, I, I'm totally supportive, Ron. I, I get that. I, I I just wanted to clarify that. Um, We've gotten the, into the weeds and a lot of this stuff, yeah. and we may find it in an appendices you rather may. than in the body itself, just to provide for ease of reading and 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 hopes that our the policymakers we're targeting have the ability to get through our recommendations before they Indeed. fall asleep or you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well said. Okay, um, let's uh, move on to the next slide. And, and this is was. this is a look at the cost of passes of half price passes. I would take a friendly amendment to delete the slide. Do I have a second on that? Any opposition to deleting the slide? Okay, it's gone. Next slide. And and this is just. An example of the challenges that are faced and why, for example, it's important to continue to fund uh, the evaluation of the cost and, and the process for uh, building Northwest Rail. It is complicated uh, and it, it is a major, major challenge. And final, uh, this is the next one. So, um, at this point, uh, Ron, do we have the recommendation for uh, for the prior one as a separate recommendation? I think it's in that list of recommendations, isn't it? So, Rod, I've, I've make sure I'm unmuted. I've put up this was the list of recommendations that was in the um, in the packet uh -huh. for everyone to review. So, this is this is. In addition to the um, the other points on the uh, first PowerPoint slide about the debt reduction, and then the Northwest Rail compromise uh, points that would also get folded into this specifically as recommendation points. These were the other these are the other specific recommendation statements. Um, Yeah, the recommendations are, are separate in this one. That was really my question. Yes, correct. Okay. So uh, we're running out of time here, folks. So we really need to move on to this last one. Uh, the last one is really uh, a, a request from RTD to uh, look at, if you, not the last one here, would, would you roll down, Ron, to where we were before? Pass the end of this. And stop, go back. back, back. And so, so this is, a, a, yeah, keep going back. This is essentially a, a, a study that goes through analyzing uh, 
why we would want to go and build uh, build out BRT while we are waiting for Northwest Rail. And it, it basically raises uh, six points on uh, why a BRT solution at this time is, is recommended. And it, it doesn't say you must do this, you must do that, but it does ask that RTD look at this and see what they, what they disagree with in terms of why that would be advantageous. And, uh, and the, the goal there is, is to give them the opportunity to say, you know, this claim that you make that it can deliver services a decade or more sooner than rail isn't true. Or the, that you can better accommodate future growth with, with the BRT, that it would be less expensive to implement than rail, that it would be less expensive to operate than rail, that it would be less expensive to maintain than rail, and that it would be less of a threat to RTD's financial, future financial stability to use this process of building out BRT and then look for the funding for rail and continue to research and pursue rail. So I know you've all had this. I, I hope you've all studiously read through each detail of it. I'm sure you don't have anything else to do, but, uh, but what, what, I'd really, what I really hope to do with this is to say, you know, we didn't just pop up and say, let's do BRT. We really looked at, at the issues related to BRT versus Northwest Rail and how BRT could get us there quicker because for the governor, it's really urgent, I think, to, to solve this problem soon, to have a solution. Uh, he's made it pretty clear that 20 years is not an option. And I think that if you look at, at the last, uh, the last dates that I had were, uh, there could be a peak, peak service by 2042 and a full implementation by 2046. That we know that's just gonna do little more than annoy and anger uh, some folks on this. So here's a, here is why BRT should be a good alternative. And I, you know, I've done all the research and come up with, with what I think are the reasons. I'm saying to, to RTD with this, we are saying to RTD with this, look at this, tell us what's wrong with these arguments. Is there something that's really missed here? And I think that's a fair thing to ask for. But I also think it gives RTD a chance to look at why going the BRT route first might be uh, a good idea. So I open this for discussion. So Rod, can I, can I just, so I, I think this recommendation is included in that list. And I think given that we're, uh, we're getting a little, we're down and I think this is the last piece. I'm bringing up this piece, which incorporates that recommendation as the next to the last bullet, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, uh, that and is I'm, not the one that has uh, mine and Elisa's edits on it. So could you bring that up and stand <clears throat> on? You know, the one that has a red red line. I, in it? I, yes, and I, there's a there's a little bit of an issue because this is these are edits to a version that was not in the packet, and it was. Um, at, these are edits to a previous version, so it doesn't include all of that, and I don't have a way to put them up side by side. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Um, maybe I can do but, that. But these are the uh, recommendations that we would be voting on, are they not? Well, right now, it's, it's the ones that are in the packet, and there are some subtle but perhaps important and, and maybe um, just doing a quick look, because I know um, the version that was in the packet tried to incorporate the comments that um, Elise made at the last meeting. Um, right. The free loop one, for example, we've already moved. Correct. So there are, and there are two of the- In both the, of those- we two that are highlighted have already been dealt with. Right. By the by the subcommittee, so it's really it's the remainder that deal with sort of the unfinished fast tracks um, 
the Northwest Rail. Piece. And those first four are pretty straightforward and things we've talked about quite a bit over time. And the, of the last two, we've made some pretty significant changes uh, to the uh, compromise one, which I think now makes that one acceptable to everyone. Can you see uh, both files now side by side? Sorry, I'm sure it's a little small and difficult. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, I don't see any changes to the first one, two, three, four, four of these. The, the fourth one is slightly different um, in the way that I referred to NAMS um, in that, but um, I, if, if, the, if the other version with the blue strike through, strike through and, and underline is acceptable, I, I, I think it accomplishes the same thing, Elise. Yeah, I think the the red line version captures it. I I don't want to belabor the point, but I thought it was useful to reference NAMS with regard with regards to BRT. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, it's the right side of my screen with the red lines. I think works. Okay. Well. Yeah, I I absolutely agree with that. Okay. So um, since we're almost out of time, uh, let can we go ahead and and take votes on some of these. Yeah, do you want to do that as a packet, Mr. Chair, with the with the one on the right here, the, the strike through, um, omitting these two that are highlighted because they've already been dealt with? Well, I'd like to. Do we have uh, consent of the rest of the committee to do that? Does anybody have any objection to that? All right, well, do I have a motion that we accept these RTDAC finance subcommittee recommendations uh, exclusive of the two that we have already voted on and accepted? I would make that motion. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? Good, thank you, Kristen. So it's open for discussion. Do we have any further discussion on these? Yes, Kristen. I was just going to say that the reason the accountability committee exists is because of the governor and the governor has said in the legislature and the legislature, they both say 20 years is not going to cut it. So with the, the possible, I don't want to call it a solution, but the proposal of the BRT filling in while the front range, uh, the Northwest Rail is in process, I think is a really good way to meet what the governor is asking for. And, and I would also say meet what the governor is asking for without putting RTV in a financially threatened position. Exactly, exactly. So that's the compromise that since I first joined this committee, I've been trying to find as a way to accomplish those two goals. I think this is a, a, a reasonable proposal for that. Okay, thank you, Kristen. Any other uh, uh, comments before we vote? Yes, Rebecca? On the last recommendation, where did the date 2026 come from? Um, it, it basically came from uh, the idea that could you finish that diagonal highway uh, uh, 119 piece. You know, the, the rest of the pieces could be done in conjunction with that. And, and you know, it might just be that those are adding some uh, beefing up the bus lines that go to uh, some of the places that are in that area. Um, we already have a, a bus line that goes down uh, for Lafayette and, and Louisville. And so, you know, it, it, really, it really is about uh, trying to get it done by 2026 based on that diagonal highway uh, 119 route. That's the, that's the hardest one in here. I think just getting back to where we were on on uh, uh, Flatiron Flyer is pretty straightforward. Okay, it's just, it's not a date that I, 
I've heard of and the, the halls of CDOT um, as a, as a- We would take more priority on 119 in order to accomplish that. And, and money. <laughs> and money, but you recall, you know, one of the recommendations is that RTD help fund that contribute to that, in which case I would think that they would be listened to a little more in terms of priority. Okay. And there's no guarantee that RTD will do that. There's no assurance. So there's no, you know, these are recommendations. You know, the RTD accountability committee recommends that RTD consider, I mean, how many waffle words do you need in there? If, if I could just add, I, I, I will be supporting this. I think it is a good blend of sort of recognizing the financial reality that RTD and the world is in um, with also saying, we're gonna, we're gonna study Northwest Rail. We're going to take advantage of the, the potential option with Front Range Passenger Rail and merge those two. We're gonna invest in BRT in the interim to um, provide some more short-term mobility which the Northwest Corridor deserves. Um, and it also talks about having a regional discussion um, as we get the information about costs and ridership so that the region is updating its understanding and views and desires about how to move forward, which I think is a key piece of this as well. Yes, Ron. Sorry to belabor this. I did, I did note that um, I popped up the other version that was in the packet. At the third bullet, Elise, did it is slightly different than the other version. Um, it it basically makes the list inclusive uh, clearly, so it just includes those things. Um, not so it's not an exclusive list, and it does add grants at your request from the last meeting um, in that list of sort of non RTD resources. So um, I would I would I would suggest that maybe you substitute this third bullet for the third bullet in the other version since you're considering that one for adoption? I, I would I, consider a friendly amendment to that effect. I would accept that. Good. Does my seconder, Kristen, do you accept that as well as a friendly amendment? Ron. Good catch. Thank you for your attention to detail. It's not my greatest skill. <laughs> Usually not mine either. <laughs> Okay, uh, Matthew, did I hear you laughing when I said that? That was that was me. No, that was me. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you know it firsthand, don't you? So, um, do we have any further discussion before we want to vote uh, up or down on forwarding these? Hearing no further discussion, all in favor of these recommendations, please raise your right or left hand. Good, unanimous, I like that. Well, you know, this is my, my special time to say thank you to all of the people who have made this possible. This was, this was a very difficult and challenging, uh, challenging process. And I'd just like to say that uh, it is a broad net, uh, starting of course with our, my fellow committee members who are both here and my co-chairs of the other subcommittees and the other co-chair and, and everyone else that's from time to time contributed to this. But in a big way, Dr. Cog, you know, uh, you guys have really, you know, when I first saw Dr. Cog would be managing the whole thing, I was a little concerned because I haven't worked with Dr. Cog much. And I, I have to say that you have done a terrific job, especially in, in the case of this committee, Ron, who has been, who's been the guy with the stick to beat us and get us is through all this, but uh, also the guy who catches all those things that I miss and somehow manages to get things done. And so thank you, Matthew, your, your write-ups uh, on uh, issues of equity have been superb. And Doug, somehow you've kept all this together through that process. But I do want to pay uh, a special thanks to RTD because this has really been uh, a long and challenging process. And it's not easy when, when you have an accountability committee created with 11 people with, with many different ideas about how to fix things. And, and it's, 
it's not a matter of fixing things. It is a matter of recognizing financial realities and the challenge from the perspective of this committee. So we've always tried to tried to look at these things in a way of how can we do this in the most economical way and the, and the least negative financial impact. That's not always possible. There, there, are, some, there are some things that are just uh, important and hard to do. But I do wanna thank everyone at RTD, uh, both, uh, both of our, our RTD reps who have been on this uh, and, and uh, have shared all these challenges with us but also CEO Johnson, who's, who has been most willing to step in and, and uh, when we, we're steering in the wrong direction, give us, give us some background on why we might want to consider other things. Uh, Deborah, I know you have a tough job and I have to say for one, I'm very pleased to see you as, as the CEO and thank you. Rudd, can I just jump in and say thank you for your incredible work as subcommittee chair, you probably spent more hours uh, creating PowerPoints, writing dissertations on um, the different pieces of the finance subcommittee's purview. Um, and we're just grateful for your service. So thanks so well, much. Well, when you're unemployed and, and totally ignorant of the subject that you're working on, <laughs> it gives you certain advantages. You know, I know most of you have held down full-time jobs while you're trying to do this. and. And I certainly appreciate all that you've done to, to uh, help steer this boat. And with that, unless there's further. If I may, if I may, I just want to extend my um, heartfelt thanks and gratitude for all of you all for your congenial spirit in which you've handled this. Recognizing I just came to this space um, in November and I jumped right in uh, head first. And I want to thank you for your dedication and commitment to ensuring that RTD could be all that it can be in reference to how it was prescribed to be. So with that, um, I know we'll be working in tandem going forward. And you have my commitment, each and every one of you, that that's my spirit in which I carry forward. So I want to thank you for your time and your dedication. Thank you, CEO Johnson. And with that, I will... Uh, close this final meeting of the RTD Finance Subcommittee. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. Thanks, Rudd and everybody. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>